Get your paper and pen if you believe you need it. You're about to experience a great time of teachings. Let's get ready to go into the message. Open your Bibles to the book of John chapter 4. John chapter 4. It was the other day, uh, may I confess, I'm in a uh, store and looks like the young lady that was helping, she was feeling a little down and she was rushing to try to do some things. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what was going on in her life. Uh, and uh, so I asked her in this, I said, are you all right? Is everything all right? You know what her response was? I just need a drink. Now I know y'all so deep in here that you have never thought, what do I need to get me past this situation? I just, if for somebody it's, I just need a cigarette. Somebody else, I need a cigar. I haven't got your role yet. Somebody else, I just need a joint. Uh, I'm, I'm not there yet. Uh, somebody else, I just need someone to talk to. I just need chocolate candy. I just need them out of my life. I just, I mean, whatever it is, sometimes, and for this young lady, it was for her, I just need a drink. Uh, while I was studying this week, I ran up on in my personal devotional time, uh, Elder Witherspoon, I've been looking in the book of John for a while, and uh, I saw this scripture again. There's about, uh, in this particular pericope, there's about uh, 10 different lessons that you can learn from it. And so if you've heard or went to this part again, you, you'll say, Pastor, wasn't you in the book of John before? Yes. But John chapter 4, I'm going to skip a little bit. One verse, verse 7, and then I'll go to verse 10, and then the 13 and 14. If you have John chapter 4, ver verse 7, say, I have it. It says, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. I ought to pause there, but I won't. For his disciples had gone away and uh, they had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, asked a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Skip down. Uh, well, go to verse 10. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is, say to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Skip down to verse 13. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of living, of water springing up into everlasting life. Let me just put in verse 15. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. My subject today is, I just need a drink. Somebody say, I just need a drink. You can have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I know, I know, immediately I'm going to get some, uh, some texts, some posts, because folk don't like to admit they just need a drink. If you're like me in particular, I'll confess, Sister Davis, uh, I'm particularly partial uh, to a cream soda 
zero sugar. And so uh, I will overindulge. Everybody say, I just need a drink. I can drink cream soda in the morning, noonday, late in the evening. It's something about that cream soda. If I see the advertisement, I just need a drink. I, I, have, I have on my app for different stores when it comes on sale. I won't pay the regular price for it. Uh oh, no, 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 no. But when they have it on sale, I'll double up on it. I'll, if you can't get but so many, I'll go to the car, put them in the trunk. Because I just need a drink. Uh, I'm that way about uh, uh, watermelon, watermelon drinks. I love watermelon drinks. If something has, has watermelon flavor infused in it, I'm, I'm going to confess to you, uh, I'll get it, whether it's some kind of punch or some type of refreshing drink, whether it's uh, soda water with a splash of it in there, whether it's the energy naturally uh, uh, vitamin B infused, if it's watermelon, uh, I'll just use that as my excuse. I just need a drink. I'm not I'm gonna, don't don't put your put your rocks down. I'm not gonna go down your road for those of you that like Hennessy or blackjack or Crown Royal, or peach or apple or I mean I'm just simply saying whatever yours is. Have you ever been in that space where you just need a drink? I know people would throw rocks. I'm in a I'm in a meeting. I won't go too far. I'm in a meeting uh, 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 with these potentates. And uh, you know how religious people get, they don't want to be too, too forward of their personal life. I agree there's some things you can't put in public, you need to keep at your house. What happens at your address stays. All right, and so I'm in there, and so this person, they, they, these potentates, they got on the subject of drinking. Everybody say, I just need a drink. They got on the subject of drinking. And so uh, they said, you know, uh, I know some of y'all wondering in here, is drinking a sin? Well, let me just ask. And so I'm, I'm, they got, I was like, what? Because this person, you know, we, I came from, from the setting traditionally where everything was a sin. Everything, every, everything. Everybody say everything. everything. You ladies in here with these fingernail polishes, it was a sin back in the day. Somebody asked me about wearing pants. Don't play. All right. Uh, God forbid. Makeup. In particular, the color red, for whatever the reason, red was the main sin. You, oh, the red lipstick, red, red, everything was a sin. So I'm listening attentively now because he in there about to mess up. He's a potentate with a big B in front of his name and all of that. And so uh, he said, well, well, the Bible doesn't say it, but let me just tell you what, what makes it. And so I'm looking for something deep now. I'm, I'm, ooh, theologically, he's about to take me down a road that I may not have considered. And so he went, well, the Bible says in this particular scripture, and he grabbed a scripture that, watch my back, grabbed a scripture that he should not have grabbed because it really did not apply. That's why you ought not do it. And so I said, okay, so if I'm not trying to be this, that, or the other, now, before you get your religious rocks, I'm not talking about drinking alcohol today. So don't send me no texts. <laughs> but I do want to say that most people that do drink alcohol is actually trying to quench some kind of thirst, something that will satisfy them that whatever's going on, they need a drink. When I get off work today, all I need is a drink. Some of you wine bibblers. If yours is wine, I'm not asking you to trip. If yours is heavy alcohol, if yours is the dark one or the, uh, uh, Pastor, how you know so much? Don't ask me to go down my track record and my history. All have, all right. And, and before you get to, Pastor, is it a sin? The Bible says all have sin and fall short. Some things are not all right. I might as well go here. Everybody say, go on, preacher. Say it louder. Say, go on, preacher. 
All right, that's what I need. Thank you. Uh, uh, the Bible says it this way. Some things are not sins, but he does say lay aside every sin and every... Yeah, you can get yourself in a situation. Uh, Pastor, well, if, if, if drinking alcohol is not a sin, then what's the problem? It could be a wait. Everybody say wait. wait. Yeah, if, if, you, if you can't do without it, it may be a... If all you're thinking about is... If you can't make it a day without... It could be somebody how to wait. All right, so I said that because, because this person said they could not wait to get off work, whatever was going on. She said, all I need, I just need a drink. It brought me in my mind while I was doing my personal devotion uh, to John chapter 4, where this woman at the well, she was coming to get a drink. She was coming to a place that it was it would be there to get refreshing, a place, ironically, and many of you that know the scriptures uh, know that she went in an inopportune time because most of the ladies that went to the well, they went a little earlier, not only to get it for the cool of the day, in the cool of the day, but also they were able to socialize. She didn't go at that time. She went in a time where it was more warm, more heated, uh, where she could be by herself, where uh, some Scholars have said she went at the time because she was a little bit uh, uh, outcast. She was ostracized. She, was, she went at that time, and that's where Jesus met her. Uh, those of you that have heard me before know that I love this text because I love it that Jesus will come to us when we feel like we ought to be alone. When we feel like people have turned their back on us. When we feel like nobody wants to be around us or they're going to talk about us. Don't you think you're by yourself. God will show up right then and there. Amen. She's at that place and at that point. And I love this because Jesus is actually playing on words like I believe I just need a drink is today. Because he tells her, he says in verse 7, don't trip on me. It was he, he was the one that started it. In verse 7, he says, give me a drink. If I wanted to get real deep with people. There was a time where they brought a whole lot of water pots or empty pots. And he said, turn that water, I tell you what, you done ran out of wine. I turned that water into But this is not what he's talking about here. So get your mind out of the cellar. He says, give me a drink. I think he's playing on words there because she said to him, uh, 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 why would you talk to me and ask me for something, me being a Samaritan woman, uh, uh, you being a Jew, we don't socialize with each other. We don't gather. I could see if you was a Samaritan. I could see if you was a person that's an uh, outcast, uh, uh, Elder Ricky. Uh, I could see if you was one of those people that, that, that I hung with. I could see if we were one of those people that we drunk together and we we, we got together. You know, back in the day, I might as well say it, since we're talking about drinking, uh, I used to drink. Everybody say drink. Now, I'm not talking about that little play stuff, y'all. Uh, all right. I used to drink. Y'all want to know what I used to drink? There's a bunch of nosy Christians in here. This is ridiculous. Saints, this is what I deal with in, in the house of God. Uh, I used to be, well, I, I drunk blackjack. Now, I know somebody in the room say, Pastor, what is that? Don't even worry about it. If you don't know, let it go. I used to drink blackjack. The other one was a uh, Crown Royal. Uh, 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 I know, I know you said, Pastor, don't start naming them. Pastor, don't start naming them. Because if you start naming them and you miss mine, I'm going to be offended. But, 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 I, but I used to drink. And so uh, uh, I, I, I wouldn't just drink uh, uh, the, the heavy, hard liquor. Uh, I don't know why I'm going this route for all these folk in here. But look at somebody and say, I just need a drink. Uh, all right, anyway. Uh, 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 but I also uh, drunk slit malt liquor bull. I could drink it in the morning. I could drink it at noon. I could drink it late in the, I mean, I, I, would, I, would, I would drink because there was a void. There was something missing that I thought I could get past it with alcohol. Now, that wasn't the only thing that I did in those days. I did a whole lot of stuff that you don't need to know. 
I, I might as well say it because y'all Christians, y'all church folk, y'all believers, y'all won't let stuff go. <laughs> no, you won't. No, you won't. That's why on social media, if somebody mess up, you put it in there. You post it. You say, girl, what? I knew it. I knew it all the time. Pastor come in and he limping. Sister, I told you Sister Castle was hitting on him. I told you. <laughs> Didn't y'all see him suddenly coming in limping? It's true. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Everybody say, I need a drink. Uh, 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 Jesus says to the woman in verse 7, give me a drink. She said, you're talking to the wrong person. I'm not a part of your group. He said to her in verse 10, he said, if you knew uh, the gift of God and who it is saying to you, give me a drink, you will have asked him. Can I go real quick here and then bounce back? Maybe that's the problem. People are asking God for the wrong thing because he immediately turned the table on her and said, you're thinking of natural. I'm trying to get you spiritual. You will have asked me for a drink, something that will quench your thirst. Let me just drop thirst. Everybody say thirst because thirst will cause you to want something that you ought not want too much of. My mother said years ago, too much water ain't good for you. You can drink a cup of it and be fine, but too much water even in your lungs, you'll drown in it. A thirst, everybody say thirst. When I looked up thirst, thirst is simply a sensation of dryness or throat caused by the need of liquid. Everybody say thirst. Another one is the physical condition of resulting from this need in its various degrees. It simply means when this body needs something to refresh, it will often say, I just need some water, I need some soda, I need some whatever, because I need something to quench my thirst. The woman here at the well, she was going to get something that quenched her thirst. And what Jesus spiritually was saying was, you will forever have a thirst in the natural until you come to me in the spiritual that can meet all of your thirst forever. The Bible says uh, in the book of John also, and many of you know when you deal with John, John always takes you away from the, the natural to the spiritual. So when you're reading the book of John, always note that he will use a natural instance, but he's trying to bring you to a spiritual intelligence. Are you with me? Jesus is trying to tell you and I, as he told the woman here, the thirst that you have can only be uh, uh, given from this well for the moment. But I can quench the thirst that you will never have need before again. He tells her, and uh, I know some of you Bible scholars know it because the Bible would say also in the book of John that, that this, this thirst is really quenched. This water is symbolizing the Holy Ghost. It symbolizes the Holy Spirit. Uh, they used to sing a song years ago. I asked my brother, uh, Sister Petrie, I asked him uh, years ago, they used to sing this song that uh, uh, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And they used to hinge on that part. They would say, flow, 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 rivers, living water. Uh, 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 some people, you, you, you have to understand what Jesus is saying there is it'll be something in you that will continue to begin to bubble up, to spring up, and that's only the Holy Ghost. That's only the Spirit of God. So while you're trying to satisfy yourself, to quench your thirst, somebody's doing it. I need more money. If I could just get more money, if I could just get to this point, trying to quench a thirst. And he's saying, when you get that dollar bill, give it a little longer and you're going to be thirsty for something else. If I could just live in this neighborhood or, or live this lifestyle, when you get there, you'll be thirsty for something else. Because the, anything in the natural, the natural will always leave you wanting. Everybody say wanting. Oh, you know it about yourself. If you've ever just wanted this particular uh, uh, type of, uh, you ladies, uh, these particular purses that cost too much money that I wouldn't buy, I guess that you would say, well, good, Pastor. You ain't got no business carrying no purse anyway. 
You're right. You're right. I'm with you. I don't know. These athletes may carry purses. I mean, man bag, whatever. It ain't me. Give me, a, give me a backpack. Give me a backpack. I don't want nothing that looking. And then and now they got the color. Anyway, uh, 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 you, you get one thing, and for long after that, you just got to have the newest, the latest, the, the most expensive. The, all I'm simply saying is, and I'm not badgering you for that. I'm simply saying you will forever thirst for something else. And I have to confess to you, that's actually the well of this world. It will always draw you back for something more. It will always get you, all right, I'll mess with you. Uh, I had a gentleman to tell me once uh, that, that he just couldn't help himself. He had to, to, to uh, have a relationship with as many women that he's, as he could. I told him, you haven't found the right one yet because I've been married to one for almost 38 years. That one <laughs> is enough. I'm serious. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that in a bad way because, because if you really give the proper attention, if you really uh, a treat, if you really love, if you really give a uh, devote to one person, you would say, all right, ladies, don't act like it's all that because one man ought to be enough, especially if he looks like me. If it's especially if he I mean, come on, one man. Don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. You have to find yours. But if you don't have the right one, this world's well will cause you to thirst after more and more. That's why I'm not tripping over Hollywood. Because Hollywood, they are married, they are in love, they can't live without them uh, for just a short period of time. And the next thing you say, what? They divorce? Yeah. Alright, I know what y'all said, Pastor. That's not today. Today, you don't have to get married. They're so thirsty. They just live in shack and have sex and have children and say, well, we can co-parent and all, and, and say, I'm out of here. I'm on to the next one. Because that's the world's well. You will forever go back to thirst in the world's well. Jesus says in John chapter 4 to this woman, you will always thirst in the world's well. But I want to give you a drink that will flow out of you like rivers of living water. That water, that river of living water is actually the spirit of God. Only the spirit of God will quench a real thirst. That means, ah, oh, I love this. Everybody say, go on, preacher. All right, I only got a few moments. That means that if you have a lot, you're okay. If you don't have a lot, you're okay. Because you're not thirsty for getting everything. So if you got a nice house, you're good. If you live in an apartment... I'm good. If I drive a fancy car, I'm good. If I got to push it before I start it, I'm good. My, my life is not, not, not living only on what you drive. Because if you are not careful, you'll think people that have a lot is okay and they can sleep at night and everything is good. But let me tell you something. You ought to be able to recognize money will not satisfy you at the level that you can't have nothing else. As a matter of fact, if you notice, there are some people that give money away like it's nothing. So Jesus tells her, he says, I need you to get to the point to ask me, what kind of drink is this? He says, this drink is living water. Everybody say living water. Say it loud. Say living water. As a matter of fact, to help boost that in your mind, say, I just need a drink. He says that if you ask me, and so she got to the point where I got to get to you for this last few moments. She got to that point because verse uh, 15 said, she says, sir, give it to me. Give me that water. I want to get to that point where I won't be hungry, thirsty, desiring over and over and over and over. I want to get to that place where I'm content, where whatever state I'm in, I'm all right. Everybody say, give me that. Come on, say it again. Say, give me that. 
the Bible would say in the book of John, and you can check John all the way through, when God is speaking through John, he always goes to that spiritual level and he really hinges on the Spirit of God, the, the Spirit of God, the, the Spirit of God. He's saying, this Spirit, uh, 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 it, uh, I, I got to leave and I'll leave you a comforter, the Spirit. This Spirit will give you, uh, he'll answer questions. He'll bring things to your remembrance. He'll give you the ability to live a life. Remember, we talked about in the book of Galatians about the fruit of the Spirit. He said, I want to get you to that point where there'll be something on the inside of you that will begin to flow, that will begin to flow. So if you don't have what she has, you still flow. If you don't have what he has, you're saying, I'm all right. God, you may bless me with it. You may not, but I'm still all right. That's what I love about somebody that's really filled with the spirit of God is because when they come in the house of God, they are not always praising God like other folk because they have everything. They're praising God because he is their everything. I'll say it again. Somebody's missing it. Some people dance only when they got the new job. Some people dance only when they get the new house. Some people dance only when they get a favorable doctor's uh, 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 diagnosis. Some people dance when everything is going their way. Some folk in here dance because they're saying it may not be this, it may not be that, but I know who he is and I'm going to be all right because there's a continual flow. That's why I love about God. He's no respecter of person. If you have different letters behind your name, it can be DD, it can be MD, it can be PhD, it can be SR, it can be JR, it can be nothing. He's no respecter of person. If you come to God like you are, he's saying, I'll do for you just like I do for them. Uh, my mother, my mother, when we grew up, we grew up in Fifth Ward in Kelly Court, and I often make mention, uh, my elder brother can bear witness, uh, 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 Deacon Edwards uh, would bear witness of it as well. Uh, I often make mention, we lived in the ghetto, and everything was not as good as everybody else. But Sister Castle would walk through the house singing. She would go, and I'm thinking, why is she singing? My God, we don't have what they have. We didn't even have a car. We were on the bus stop in the rain or in the heat. And this woman is acting like everything because there was something down. Somebody say, I just need a drink. Uh, something down in her that said, with it, I'll praise him. Without it, I'll praise him. Because there's something on the inside that can only be filled with the Holy Ghost. I remember my mother used to tell us, she said, we won't live here always. She used to tell us, we won't be at the bus stop always. I remember, and y'all heard me tell this testimony, when we got our first car that they pulled, I think, from Richard, Texas. I don't know. It didn't have no AC. It didn't have no power steering. Uh, uh, it was real big, and uh, she fought with it to get it out of the parking space, and she was sweating by that time, and everything that was on it was dirty by that time, and we drove, and she had to get up to a certain speed to let the air in because we had, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. All of y'all been in air condition. All your life. She said, we won't live from the bus stop to this always. I remember when we got the first car with the AC in it. That was a 72 uh, Impala. It was the big one, the big one that was about at least 10, uh, 10 to 15 to 20 feet long and about 10 to 15, 20 feet wide. And, 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 but it had AC. I thought to myself, this is the life. Ricky had an in, Danny had an in, I had an in, mother had an in. You have to lean over to touch them. <laughs> we didn't have to, and I remember, I, I remember, because we were no longer at the bus stop. We were no longer in the, but she was still doing the same singing, the same praising, the same telling God thank you with it when we didn't have it because there was something on the inside of her. When she said, I just need a drink, she knew that it was the Spirit of God that will bless her with it or without it. It was still God. Tell somebody, I just need a drink. What Jesus was saying, if I could finish right here, is you will only be able to quench a real thirst with the power of God in your life. You will only be able to have a real thirst uh, satisfied in you with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Ghost comes, somebody will have to wonder, how can you be so joyful when everything is going wrong? Because I had a drink. 
Somebody's wondering, how can you shout and dance when you don't have or people are treating you wrong and people are doing you wrong because I had a drink. I got here and I'm not based, the party is not based on you. It's based on the drink I got. So I come in saying, I'm in the room, I'm in the house. Everything will be all right because I've had, what is that drink? Were well, you in the right place? Because you can leave the day full of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, fill me up. I love it about the Holy Ghost because if you feel like you need more, that flow on the inside, you can get a refill right from the inside of God. He does not leave you by yourself. He will not allow you to be in a position where you can get thirsty for it. There's something about the Holy Ghost. He senses that there you may be getting a little low. My car, it gives me a little light that comes on when it gets to a certain point, but the Holy Spirit it already knows that when you deal with that you're gonna need some more of me so something on the inside will begin to rise up and say praise me more lift me more magnify me more glorify me more somebody shout I just you don't have to stand in line for this one you won't run out for this one this one is automatic this one is on the inside I don't have to pray now money all I have to say is God feel me again feel me again feel me again feel. and somebody in here right now you've been depressed you've been oppressed you feel like everything is going wrong I'm here to tell you today all you just need You just need the water that's springing up. You just need the water that's not a natural well. You need that spirit on the inside. If I had time, I would go to John chapter uh, 12 and I would begin to deal with issues. If I had time, I would go on to John uh, through the end of it. And he says to them, if you get this on the inside, if you get filled with the spirit, if you begin to worship God, that spirit will begin to kindle. Somebody had that drink this morning. When you came in, you didn't come in complaining. You came here, you had your drink. Somebody else is saying, I may have been down when I came in, but God lifted me. Somebody say, I had my drink. Excuse me if I walk out a little woozy, because I came in saying I just need a little drink. They wasn't serving that. He was serving the Holy Ghost. He was serving the Spirit of God. And if you feel like you're not satisfied, if you feel like this is not enough, all you got to do is say, feel me again. Feel me again. That's why I'm happy all the time. I'm not happy all the time because of stuff. I'm not happy all the time because of my circumstances. Because sometimes they're bad. But what's on the inside of me is saying, don't trip about the outside. Be glad that I'm on the inside. Because on the inside, even though the outside may be rocking, you're all right. I'll keep you stable. Somebody say, I just need a drink. Jesus tells the woman there at the well. He says to her, if you knew who it was and what I have for you, I got a gift for you that you will never thirst again. You will never thirst again. The young lady that was at the store that told me she just needed a drink. Just so happened, I told her, I said, you know what? I don't know you and, and you don't know me, but I had with me one of our cards. I took it out. I said, I don't know you, but on the back of it is a QR code and I want you to just, uh, uh, just scan it and I want you to connect with me. She said, but I, uh, sir, I work every Sunday. I said, that's not a problem. You can catch us on social media at any time. I left her thinking, I hope she gets that drink. Not this one, but this one. That will forever quench the thirst that she had for that living water. Today I want to admonish you. I want to encourage you. No matter what your situation is, and I know life will cause you to draw to certain things. 
even if it ain't a sin, it may be a weight. Even if it, it's not a weight, it will never really quench the thirst like living water. And so if I were to draw back to the old saints, the way they used to sing it, the way they used to say it, they used to declare that out of your belly will flow. Everybody say rivers. Say it like you mean to say rivers. Rivers of living water. They used to say it. The scripture said it. Out of your belly. So if you need a drink, today is your day while you're standing to your feet.